Good evening. My name is Zach Thompson, KM4BLG, and today I'll be uh, telling you about Whisper. So first off, what is Whisper? Uh, Whisper stands for Weak Signal Propagation Reporter. It is a system of digital radio beacons that transmit three main things. The call sign, the maidenhead grid locator, which we'll talk about here in a minute, and transmitter power output, how much power they're running. Whisper beacons uh, transmit in two minute intervals starting at every even minute. So they'll start at zero minutes past the hour, two minutes past the hour, four minutes, six, eight, ten, and so forth and so on. Um, whisper beacons can be decoded at very, very weak signal levels, often below the noise floor. Uh, you can even decode whisper signals that you can't even hear um, if you were to listen to them uh, by ear. So first off, to give a little bit of background about Whisper, um, they are a type of propagation beacon. Um, kind of what propagation beacons are is a beacon station is a one-way transmitting station that transmits periodically for the purpose of disseminating information. Beacons exist for many purposes, but they are often used to study radio propagation. Um, they can give out a wide variety of information, but most of the time, they're simply there just to see if the band's open or not. And uh, beacons often offer a good control variable when studying radio propagation due to their consistent nature. Most of the time, they're running the same power level, same antennas, um, same uh, uh, you know, same frequency, same everything. So it kind of gives you something to compare things back to. And traditional beacons typically transmit a fixed CW message on 10 meters and above. Um, you know, usually they had some sort of looped CW message, usually with a call sign, maybe a little bit of information about where it's located, but uh, just kind of kept uh, repeating that information on CW. And basically you would determine if there was a band opening based off of if you could hear it or not and how strong. So here's where CW beacons fall short. Um, reports of a received signal often rely on human interaction. Uh, somebody's actually got to tune in the, the beacon and uh, copy the code and uh, yeah, and, and make record of it. Um, while they are of course better than single sideband, um, the uh, signal to noise ratios have to still be fairly high. Um, you still have to be able to hear it to decode it. Um, so you can actually decode down to about um, minus 18 dBm uh, with CW versus 29, minus 29 dBm for Whisper. Uh, quite a bit of difference there. Basically the signal can be 10 times weaker with Whisper. Um, while there is some room for general signal strength measurements, uh, most propagation information collected from CW beacons is very vague. Um, you can tell if you know if you can hear it or not, but uh, that's that's about it. Uh, you can't really tell a lot about you know how. I mean, you can kind of get a general idea of how strong the signal is, but you have no real numerical way to to really analyze it there. Um, CW signals typically use more bandwidth and therefore can cause congestion on the bands. Um, if everybody set up their own CW beacon, uh, we'd quickly fill up the bands, um, you know, with, with not not a lot of effort. And uh, so so that's why there's not a lot of them out there, um, you know, because just everybody wants to be courteous to everyone else. And uh, they can be prone to errors from changing band conditions or just human error, uh, because uh, of course, you know, you can have noise and static crashes and people tuning up over top of them and then of course just human error um, if you're copying CW somebody may have misheard a character or something along those lines so um, here's kind of where whisper shines when compared to a uh, CW beacon um, first off you've got error correction this is a big one right here uh, this this basically means that um, you know any errors that it gets um, it's going to try its best to correct those. So that's what makes it so resilient, one. And another thing is that data is represented numerically, allowing for higher precision analysis. Um, everything in Whisper is all based off of some sort of measurable metric. Um, so with that, not only can that give you a, a more precise idea of what's going on, but also you can uh, run this stuff and through uh, your typical data analysis protocols and uh, just kind of see how band conditions are changing over time. And the uh, WhisperNet database, which we'll cover a little bit later on, 
allows for seamless integration of whisper transmitters and receivers to create a global network. Uh, basically, whisper, um, it also somewhat relies on the internet. Um, of course, the actual transmitting and receiving is done over the radio, but uh, you can use the internet to kind of augment the data that you're getting there. And they're easy, affordable, and efficient. Um, pretty well everybody can do it. Um, it actually is a lot easier than you'd think, and we're, we'll talk about that a little bit here in the presentation. So, but why would you want to transmit beacons, you know, one-way transmissions? Why, why would you do that over top of uh, making regular QSOs? Well, first off, uh, you can use Whisper to check over all propagation conditions. You know, where's the band open to? You know, what can you hear? Where can you get? Everything like that. Um, you can analyze overall performance of antennas, um, which, you know, you can, you can actually compare and contrast your antennas. Let's say you've got a dipole and a vertical and you kind of want to see which one works best. Um, you, you can definitely uh, do that with Whisper. And you can just test your transmitter and receiver. It, it's a good, common, consistent source that uh, makes sure that your transmitter is getting out there and your receiver is picking up everything it should. And uh, plus, it's just downright fun to see where you can go. I mean, especially uh, those of us that started out with shortwave listening. It's, uh, it's fun just to kind of see how far you can hear and how far you can uh, transmit. So. so, kind of a general overview of how to get started. Um, first off, you'll need three things. Uh, you'll need a radio of some kind. Uh, you'll either need a transmitter, a receiver, or a transceiver. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, some of the options for that. And um, you'll need a controller with an accurate clock. Um, with a lot of people getting started, this is a uh, computer running the WSJTX software, which is free, by the way. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about it later on in the presentation as well. And uh, you'll and 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 the accurate clock is very very important um, because this starts every even minute. Um, you, you'll need a clock that's accurate to within about a second or two, um, which is which is actually easier said than, or that's actually fairly easy. That's um, especially if you're using a computer, you can use an internet time sync. Some things use GPS time sync, uh, which we'll we'll get into a little bit later. And then of course your antenna of choice. Um, this this of course can vary wildly, um, you know. And if you're comparing antennas, it may vary, you know, based on your experiments. But uh, in either case, you will need some sort of antenna. And uh, of course, some examples. Like I said, the most common setup: somebody running WSJTX on their computer hooked up to their regular HF transceiver or an SDR receiver, for that matter. And then there's also some dedicated Whisper hardware out there, some transmitters and receivers that are built specifically for Whisper. And we'll look at some examples of those later on as well. So uh, first off, we mentioned that uh, WSJTX program. Let's uh, talk a little bit about that now. Um, WSJTX is a free digital mode software that allows you to transmit and receive Whisper as well as a variety of other digital modes. Um, those of you that have ever used FT8 or JT65 or, or any other similar mode such as that um, are, are probably already familiar with this program. But uh, it's definitely a good program to have even if, even if Whisper is not, uh, not what you're interested in. And uh, it's written directly by the creators of Whisper. Um, there are some third-party softwares out there, but uh, this is my personal favorite because because it's written by the same people that made Whisper. They definitely have a clear understanding of how everything works and can uh, tweak it and make it make it work to its 100% best capability. And then uh, it's also cross-platform, uh, which is nice. It works on Windows, Mac, Linux. Uh, you can pretty well run it on just about anything. And uh, it's open source, um, which means for, for those of you that are kind of curious on how things work and, and all that kind of stuff, you can uh, kind of look under the hood, if you will, and uh, kind of poke around and see, see, what, uh, see how it works and everything like that. And even make your own modifications if you really want. I will say, though, I have looked around to code a little bit on it, and the code's a little bit... Uh, little bit complex it's kind of hard to understand some parts of it but uh, but if you spend enough time pouring over it I, I have a feeling you could probably really learn some stuff from it but uh, anyways and then um, it pairs with a regular transceiver and a sound card interface such as a signal link uh, you can build your own interface you can get a signal link a rig blaster uh, pretty well any sound card interface that many of you probably already have if you work any other digital modes Oh, it should work just fine. For those of you that are already digital ready, this is as simple as 
setting up another piece of software. So here's a screenshot of uh, the WSJTX screen. Uh, let's just go through this real quick, um, you know, just real briefly. And so basically with each whisper transmission, the little lines here separate the different, you know, transmit windows, the, the two minute intervals. Um, here you've got your times and UTC as to when this was received. Um, here's your signal. Um, of course, these are these are negative numbers here, so you know a, a smaller number is better. Um, some of them even have real strong signals like plus two. Um, here's your um, delta time. This basically kind of shows how far off these stations are from from your system clock. Um, you, this is about normal right here. If you see everybody has you know two and three second delta time there, um, then you know that there's probably something off with your clock. But but for the most part, this looks normal. Um, you know, everybody seems to have pretty close clocks there, um, you know, as far as being off from that. Here's the exact frequency. Um, basically, within your 2.8 kilohertz that your single sideband transceiver has, you can have multiple whisper signals. Um, and this is, the, this is the exact frequency that they're on. Here's the drift. That's in hertz per minute. Um, that's... That right there is is um, most of the time that's that's going to stay fairly low, pretty close to zero. It once again, kind of like the delta time. If you start seeing these numbers starting to get pretty pretty out of hand, then, then chances are it's on your end. You probably got drift on your end. But uh, you see here, there's not a lot of drift. There's there's this guy and uh, this guy here. Um, so that's probably their own stations. And one hertz per minute really isn't bad. Um, so here's here's the call sign of the station. Uh, you see there's actually a few DX calls in there. And then here's the uh, grid square, um, which we'll talk a little bit more about later on. I'm sure a lot of you probably already kind of know how this works, but that's, that's a way of telling where they're at in the world. And uh, here's their transmitted power in DBM. We'll also uh, talk about that a little bit later on. Um, but that, uh, that, that's another way of representing their transmitted power. That's not watts. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. And here's their distance in miles. Um, the software by default comes enabled with um, kilometers, but you can go into the settings and change it to miles, which I did here. And uh, kind of take a tour of the rest of the program here. Over here is where you can select your band and your frequency, and you got your signal bar there. Um, Here's where you can clear out this screen if, if you just want to get all this stuff off there, that erase button there. Um, enable transmit, that enables you transmitting whisper. Um, halt transmit, this is kind of basically if something goes wrong while you're transmitting, you know, the, the antenna is out of tune or, or uh, you know, you, you realized you forgot to plug up the antenna or something like that, you can kill the transmitter in a hurry right there. Um, here's your tune button, just what it sounds like, continuous tone uh, used for tuning your antenna tuner and checking power levels, stuff like that. Uh, this little slider right here, you can turn down the power just by lowering the audio level. Um, right here, you pick how much power you're running um, you know, through your radio as to what, what is transmitted with your message. Um, right here, this transmit percentage, we'll look at this a little bit later on with a live demo of this, but um, that means 20% of the time it's going to transmit and 80% of the time it's going to receive. So if you've got five transmit periods, you're going to transmit for one of them and you're going to receive for four of them. And you can adjust that, you know, up or down. You can even set that to 100% and just continually transmit. You can set that to 0% and just, just listen. Um, this upload spots, that's to upload them to that WhisperNet database, which we'll cover a little bit later. Um, the type 1 messages, basically there's two types of messages with Whisper. There's one that comes in two parts, which is a type 2 message, and there's one that comes in one part, which is a type 1 message. The two part messages, um, basically you can have longer call signs in case you've got, you know, like a slash and then a bunch of letters. And you can also have a longer grid square, which gives you a little bit more precise location. You won't see those a whole lot, but you will see them occasionally. Most of the time, just, just stick with type 1 messages. And, um, and yeah, that's, and transmit next, that is basically saying, 
you know, if you've enabled transmit, transmit on the next cycle. As soon as this one's finished, start on the next one. Um, instead of waiting until it kind of comes back around. And then this little bar down here just kind of shows you the progression in the cycle. You know, you're 80 seconds out of 120 in that two minute cycle. So we mentioned these grid squares. Um, let's talk for a minute about the main head grid locator. Um, basically, um, you, you don't need to know you know the, the entire ins and outs of how this works because there's all sorts of calculators and converters and stuff like that online but um, it kind of gets the general idea um, basically each digit um, represents a, a part of a grid that the earth is broke up into and represents latitude and longitude um, to kind of understand this I'll show you a visual so as you see here um, the earth is broke up into grids and here we're in EM85 in uh, the Western North Carolina area. So that first digit is going to be um, this way. Um, so you come over to E and then you go over to M, M. Then, so that, so EM is right in this, this whole area right here of the earth. Now, whenever you look at one of those grids it's broken up into another set of smaller grids this is over in Europe but the same concept applies everywhere um, so you know if this if this was the the EM grid um, then we would come over here to EM 8 and then 5 that would be us although granted this is not us this is over in Europe but you kind of see the idea and as you get more digits to this, um, you get even more grids. Um, so like within each one of these grids is, even, is a few more grids. And then within each one of those is a few more grids. And basically, um, you know, the more digits you get, the more precise your location is. The, um, the, the, the caveat here is if you're, if you're in, let's say, IO85, you know, like this is right here, you could be anywhere within that square, anywhere at all, um, and there's really no way to tell exactly where, unless you broke it into smaller grids, and then you're anywhere within this little grid over here, you know, and so forth and so on. So we talked about that weird way of measuring power. Um, it actually makes quite sense. That's in dB, um, which is decibels of gain or loss compared to a one milliwatt, um, dB over a milliwatt, and. Um, uh, which kind of gives you a numerical way um, to analyze that. And basically, um, you don't necessarily need to know this math, but the power in dBm is, is going to be this equation to convert it from watts, and to convert it to watts from dBm is this equation here. So here's a chart. Um, you don't need to memorize this or anything like that, but just kind of give you a general idea. Um, you know, you start off with one milliwatt. For every 3 dB, it's doubled. There's 2 milliwatts. Um, you know, for every 10 dB, it is uh, multiplied by 10, so there's 10 milliwatts, and so forth and so on. You know, you see here 5 watts, which is a very common power level to run, is 37 dBm. And uh, double that, 3 more dB, 10 watts. You know, double that again, 3 more dB, 43, you know, and so forth and so on. The nice part about this is because our signal is also represented in dBm, you can actually calculate the difference between how much power was transmitted and how much power was received and see how much loss you have over that distance, uh, which is really nice. So um, another thing we mentioned was WhisperNet. Um, this is a worldwide Whisper database. Um, many Whisper software packages automatically upload receive stations to this database. And there's a lot of ways you can query this database to uh, get information. Uh, basically, uh, WhisperNet um, allows you to um, uh, allows you to view what stations heard you and what stations you heard and uh, basically brings back all the stations that are hearing anything back into a database and you can kind of see where your signal is being picked up and uh, we'll look at that a little bit more in detail in just a little bit um, but first let's talk about some whisper specific hardware um, you know there's these are just a few models um, there's definitely some some more out there. This is just a few examples. This is the whisper light um, It's 200 milliwatt transmitter um, That doesn't sound like a lot, but with whisper um, You don't need a lot um, a few milliwatts can get you to the other side of the world um, There's two models. There's a classic and a flexi um, basically the big difference is the um, 
uh, the the classic only goes up to 20 meters, um, but it does have filtering already built in for 30 and 20 meters. Um, the Flexi um, has no filtering built in, but it goes all the way up to six meters. And for either of these mode or bands that are outside of the the filtering that's built in, if any. Um, have to have an external filter to filter out the harmonics uh, so that way you don't splat it across the entire band. All right, um, another example is the Ultimate 3S. This is another transmitter only, 250 milliwatts. Um, supports other modes as well as Whisper. I think you can do JT65 maybe, I think FT8, CW. Um, there's a couple other modes in there you can do. Um, and it uses, it can actually use GPS for time sync and location. Um, so it uses GPS to make sure that it starts on that even minute we were talking about, as well as sets that grid square location. So if you uh, carry this somewhere else and hook it up, you don't have to reprogram it with the proper grid square. And this one too needs band specific filters. Uh, most of these generate a square wave, which uh, is basically harmonic hell if you're... Uh, if you're trying to um, use them. They, they will actually create harmonics pretty well up the entire radio spectrum without filtering. Here's another one. This was this is the Light APRS-W. This one was originally built for tracking balloons, like weather balloons. Um, it also does APRS. It's an APRS and whisper transmitter for balloons. It does one watt on APRS, which is another presentation for another time, and only 10 milliwatts whisper, which is still pretty good, especially since this will be, you know, thousands of feet up in the air. Um, it also has GPS for time and location tracking, um, and it weighs only nine grams. Um, it's it's very very small. Another one is uh, Whisper of Whisper specific hardware is the Zactech Whisper transmitter, and no, this is not my company. Um, this is just happened to be the name of it. Another transmitter only, uh, 200 milliwatts. Uh, also uses GPS. Uh, filtering is all built in, so it's ready to go. Uh, plug and play, pretty much. Uh, as soon as you program in your call sign. And um, there are three models of this. Um, they all work the same way, but there's one that's for lower frequencies with the 2200 meter and 630 meter bands. There's a mid um, range one, which is 160 meter. Through 20 meter, and then there's a high band one that is 17 through 6 meters. And he's actually got some bundles where you can actually buy combinations of these um, and save a little bit of money too um, if you wanted to get more than one of those band spreads. Another one is Whisbury Pi. Uh, many of you have, have probably already heard of the Raspberry Pi um, uh, portable mini computers. They're about the size of a credit card. And um, there's a software where using the GPIO or general purpose input output, um, you can generate um, very low power levels worth of worth of RF. Um, and people have found out how to turn that into a whisper transmitter. Um, but it does present a square wave. It will splatter all over the band. So you have to have a really good filter on it, as you see here. And, but it only transmits a few milliwatts. I'm not sure entirely exactly, but it's very, very low power um, overall. So another piece of Whisper specific hardware is the RTL SDR. Um, this is um, the, these are little $25 USB dongles you can buy on online. Amazon has them, and they're also useful for other frequencies and modes. Um, every ham should have at least one of these. Uh, they're super fun to play with. Um, they'll receive everything HF, VHF, UHF, uh, pretty well, just about you name it. Um, they can go into HF with direct sampling. Uh, there's a mode you can enable in this to get it into HF. It normally is only for VHF, UHF, but if you enable that mode, it will go into HF. It is a decent receiver, um, but it's very easily desensed. If you're transmitting any RF at all anywhere near this, it just kind of wipes it out. But all right, and here is the WhisperNet database. Um, this is the, the main website that you come up on. And um, there's kind of like a, a, some news and blog and all that kind of stuff here. But um, the main thing that I want to show you here is if you go to the database, um, you can go here and you can pick your band. Um, you can pick uh, 
uh, whatever whatever your particular band is. I'm just going to leave this at all right now. I've been transmitting Whisper for the last little bit. Um, you can pick which mode. Um, this, you don't necessarily have to worry about a whole lot. There's a couple other experimental modes of Whisper. Pretty well everything that we've discussed here is going to be about Whisper 2, um, the two-minute Whisper. Um, we can just leave that as all right now. Um, I'm going to set this count. It's normally set to 50. I'm going to set it to, to 5,000. Probably won't be that many reports, but it makes sure that we get all the ones we want to see. Call sign. Um, this is this is the call sign of the transmitting station. Um, you know, I put my call sign in here. Um, reporter. This is the call sign of the receiving station. Um, so if you want to see what all one particular station was receiving. And in the last hour, 12 hours, 24 hours, week or two weeks, I'm just going to put 24 hours. Um, that's that's how how far back you want to see these spots. And sort by, you can sort by timestamp, call sign, reporter, frequency, uh, signal to noise ratio. And this, you know, every every metric you have here, and this one's pretty interesting, kilometers per watt. Um, this uh, basically shows how efficient your signal is. Um, you, you basically can say, you know, I, I want to, it's basically how far you can go with how little power. Which is pretty neat to see how, how far you're getting on how little power. Um, reverse, this just uh, changes the order. Um, instead of going from A to Z, it goes from Z to A. Um, unique, um, normally if this is unchecked, it's going to show the um, each individual report um, that came in. And even if a station heard you multiple times, that station will pop up on there multiple times. Um, so I'm going to leave that unchecked for a minute. This you don't necessarily have to worry about. That has to do with some telemetry stuff. But with these options here, let me just go ahead and hit update. And you see there's 270 spots, 270 reception reports for the time I've been transmitting, which was for the last few, about 30 minutes or so as I've been giving this presentation. Um, and, uh, you know, as you can see here, there's some DX calls. Here's your date and time. Uh, in UTC, uh, my call sign, the frequency, signal to noise ratio, this is the signal that they got, the drift, we've already talked about this stuff, the, the my grid square, my power level, they've actually converted it to watts here, I'm running 37 dBm, which is, is 5 watts, um, the reporter, this is who actually heard me, um, Here's the grid square of the receiving station. Um, here's how far they are away in kilometers. Here's the azimuth, um, what compass direction they are away, and of course that mode we were talking about a minute ago. Now we mentioned show unique, so let me go back here um, and show you what that unique uh, category is all about. Um, like I said, sometimes this website takes a minute. Um, it takes in a lot of data, uh, has a lot of users, and because this is kind of a community effort, they, they actually don't have a lot of money to run a big server farm. So um, if you go here and check Unique, uh, this is just going to show, um, like I said, just the stations that picked me up and how many times they picked me up instead of how many reports. So if you see here, there was actually only 83 individual stations that picked me up, and you see their call signs here. Um, this is actually a shortwave listener um, that they kind of made up their own call sign for shortwave listening. This is the number of times they picked me up. If you go down here, um, someone picked me up five times um, and everything. So that's that's kind of the unique thing. Um, and then one other thing I want to show you on this website is if you go to this map, um, I'm going to go down here. You can specify the band, call sign, pretty much everything you specified over there. I've got it set to the last hour that I want to see all this. Um, and if you go up here to the map, this map shows, let me zoom in here. This map shows from my location. If you'll zoom out, you've got all these different lines that shows all the signals that have went out and how all the stations have picked me up. You see I've been picked up in, in Hawaii, Alaska, Iceland, all over Europe, even in New Zealand, um, South America somewhat, and all over the United States and Canada. And this just kind of gives you a visual representation at 5 watts.
how far out I'm getting, um, which is actually running quite a bit of power um, for that, even into Iceland too. Um, so that's pretty well um, the the overall idea of Whisper. Um, that's uh, I do I do thank you for for tuning into this presentation, and uh, yeah, well, I'll go and say seventy threes, and everyone take care and feel free uh, anybody to send me any questions they have, and I'll be happy to answer them for you.